Hey, Dad. Today, I'm going to tell the story of the Boston Corners. The Boston Corners? The Boston Corners? Yep, the Boston Corners. Hey, everybody. Luke Miller here from Real New York Tours. There is nothing I love more than sharing obscure, off-the-beaten-path history. And today, I decided to get out of New York City, head to upstate New York, and I want to share with you a fascinating, seldom-talked-about historical site. Today's stop, the Boston Corners. So check out a map of the southwest corner of Massachusetts, and you'll notice that it looks like someone literally hacked off its corner. When map makers drew these boundary lines in the 1700s, most likely nobody had ever actually been here to check out the topography. If they had, they might have noticed the Taconic Mountain Range, which cut this area off from the rest of Massachusetts, but more importantly, cut it off from local law enforcement agencies. A journey here for a constable on horseback could take hours. They literally had to go around the Taconic Mountain Range, through New York or Connecticut, where they lost all legal jurisdiction. Word would spread far and wide amongst criminals and outlaws that in the Boston corners, they were beyond the reach of the law. Now the problem would only get worse with the extension of the Harlem Valley rail line here in 1852. Derelicts from New York and beyond could now directly be chauffeured into this area. The small farming community here petitioned the state to turn over the Boston Corners to New York, which had easy access to this area, but the state dragged its feet. So what did it take to solve this problem? An illegal prize fight. Now 140 miles away in New York City, promoters were gearing up for a heavyweight championship bare knuckle boxing match between the champ Yankee Sullivan and the challenger John Morrissey. Bare knuckle boxing was a huge money making racket, but was illegal and had to be held undercover. The Boston Corners was the perfect location. Now this just wasn't a fight between two men, but rather a fight between two ideologies. Each man had strong ties to the opposing political parties in New York City, and tensions had been running high. Yankee Sullivan belonged to the Know Nothings, an anti-Catholic, anti-immigration, far right-wing party. Now, John Morrissey was a part of the Tammany Hall Democratic machine, corrupt but with a pro-immigrant, pro-Catholic stance. On October 12, 1853, the 150 people that lived in this little hamlet would be overrun by over 3,000 rowdy drunken louts that have come far and wide to witness this much-anticipated slugfest. And this is where it all went down. Now, Yankee Sullivan was considered the better boxer, but John Morrissey was younger, stronger, and therefore the odds favorite. This would be a bloody, brutal 37-round slugfest with Sullivan dominating most of the fight. Now, what happened in the 37th round is often debated, but most accounts state that Yankee Sullivan saw one of his friends being beaten up by another spectator outside the ring and left the ring to come to his aid. After numerous attempts by the referee to get him back into the ring, the referee finally disqualified him, handing the win to John Morrissey. This sent Sullivan fans into a rage. It didn't help that the referee also had money bet on John Morrissey. A full-blown riot would ensue and fights would break out all over this field behind me. Unfortunately, these riders would start looting on their way back to the train. Farms and homes were ransacked, valuables were stolen, hogs were slaughtered and roasted along the roadside. The Boston Corners would be stripped of anything edible. The brawl at the Boston Corners would become national headlines. The police would eventually catch up to both fighters, but the end result was drastically different. Yankee Sullivan would skip bail, head to San Francisco, where the law would eventually catch up to him, and he would die in a federal penitentiary at the age of 45. John Morrissey was fined $1,200, but went on to be a national celebrity as the new heavyweight champ. He would go on to open successful gambling casinos, even co-founded the Saratoga Racehorse Course. But in the end, he did the obvious. He became a New York State Senator. But finally, finally, the Boston Corners got their wish. 
On January 3rd, 1855, Congress changed the state line. They hacked off this little corner on future maps and the Boston Corners officially became a part of New York State. Hey guys, well I hope you enjoyed this story about the Boston Corners. I promise I will be back with more cool off the beaten path historical sites. In the meantime, I gotta catch a train back to New York City. I'll see you guys there.